Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. I read that it is said if someone cannot safeguard his breath, he has lost himself. Is there a way or practices to get back his breath? <laughs> to catch back the breath. Alhamdulillah that the tariqah and, and all spiritual paths are based on the breath. And this is uh, something that not been taught anymore for some reason. That the importance of our life is not in all the plannings and everything that we want that goes with what we talked about tonight. Is that it's not what we want in, in life and, and how we're going to want all these things but how to appreciate what has been given in our life. And the greatest gift that God has given to us is our breath. So before we make plans for insurance and, and retirement and all these things that we want to take and make plans for, the pious predecessors and awliyaullah, the saints of the way have described that everything is based on our breath. We have 24,000 breaths in one day. And these are all pockets of life, breath in and breath out. If God grants an, a breath, you live and you can exhale. But if God has written that no more breath, there is no money on earth that can buy that breath. It means the extent of our life and, and the condition of our life is based on this nafas. So, it brings back our focus that don't focus so big on all the things you want and when it doesn't come the way you want and you start to become angered by the Divine, God forbid. But they come to teach from the most essential element of our existence is your breath. Are you thankful to God for that breath? And when you want to become conscious of breath then study the people whom have difficulty of breath and especially the poor and the children whom whom it's not their doing, it's not from cigarettes they destroyed their lungs. But poor children whom have asthma and difficulty of breathing, what a difficult life and existence they have, what a tremendous fear that they have that every moment they're fearing the next breath won't come in. And then to, to meditate and be conscious of, of, of this immense gift, Ya Rabbi thank you for the breath you've given to me. And that when they meditate to be conscious of a nafas coming in, and that's why we call it nafas rahmah the breath of the All Merciful. Because this breath that comes in, is it with the zikr, is it with the praising, is it with an energy and the thankfulness to the Divine and that becomes a light that enters into the being with that breath. And that's why in the meditation and, and get the, the meditation book and the practices of the meditation, that's the whole foundation of meditation is that when you sit at the levels of meditation and tafakkur to contemplate. And first step is to be appreciating the breath that's coming in, Ya Rabbi, O oh my Lord, let this breath to come as a positive energy. And you visualize a, a qudra, a light coming from all directions and breathing in that positive energy and exhaling all negativity and bad character. And that becomes the physiology of our breath that when this oxygen comes in, it comes into the lungs. If you're conscious of that energy and that breath coming in, you make that breath to be charged and positive. Then you safeguard the breath, means that's why there's no smoking because you're killing yourself. No one has to tell you that that's forbidden. The tree of life that you see on the horizon, God has already given that within us. The tree of life is the bronchial tree, is the, is the lungs. Our life was to nourish that tree with a Divine breath and Divine grace and use the vehicle of our physicality to unlock the reality of the soul and to move within the heavens in this lifetime and in this existence. Not when you're dead, it's too late then. So then the world is trying to burn and contaminate the tree, so no, you can't do that. You're, so, you're to nourish that breath, nourish that energy that comes in. And when it comes in pure and purified, then that breath and those lungs are now sending that power into the heart. So then the condition of your heart, now you see the chain of how this is going to be affecting you. The condition of your heart is going to be based on the power of your breath. So when you're conscious of your breath, and you're making that breath with zikr in a state of meditation, trying to breathe the energy in, 
the, that divine breath, that beautiful breath, it begins to dress the heart, dress the blood, the blood that enters into the heart. Now if that heart is making a chanting and saying, Allah, 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 means then that blood is now being stamped with zikr. And the part of the blood that's being stamped is the iron. So the iron inside the blood cell is the one that being stamped by Divine energy and that's why that iron is in the body, it's for guidance. That's why the blood is red and that's the secret of that. So when Allah tells the servant to remember me and by doing their breathing and remembrance and zikr and chanting, what's happening every time they're chanting? That the heart is stamping that iron, that blood with Divine names. Divine grace, Divine lights. As a result, that blood now is pumped throughout the body and all the eleven organs and dressing all the organs with the zikr of Allah with the praises of the Almighty. So the breath is the whole gateway for that energy to come. If the person is unconscious of it, means then they don't understand the importance of the breath, they don't know what's happening with their blood how the heart is stamping them and then from that how is it affecting the rest of the organs of the body. And evilness understands you as a kingdom of God and his whole interest is to take down one potential king at a time. For if you should reach to Divine Grace you have the strength of a thousand men. So his objective is what? Take you down. How is he going to take you down? By all of your defense mechanisms of your body. Make you to drink what's inappropriate, make you to smoke and to intoxicate and to destroy the lungs and destroy your kidneys, destroy your liver so that your whole body's mechanism of defense is brought down and then their negativity overtake the body and overtake the heart because everything's fighting for the heart of mankind. If evilness and bad energy enter, but Allah gave all these mechanisms of defense on your physiology. So how He's attacking them? By making them to drink, by making them to smoke, by making them to eat inappropriate. Why? Because you're going to destroy the liver, the kidneys and all of the, the body's defense mechanisms and then attack their breath and destroy their lungs and their heart so that they can overtake the heart and destroy that one potential king. So spirituality is to now understand what's happening and how to bring that energy, to bring that defense and to bring that power back on, onto the soul inshaAllah. Uh, as salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi. Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the importance of the nuqt as mentioned in the nasheeds? Oh, that's a big one, yeah. That's an ocean of power and <clears throat> to be dressed by that ocean of power inshaAllah and to follow the reality of that, that qudra, that everything that comes into existence is just by a dot. You don't have to think much more than that. That when God wants something to come into existence it's appear and that appearance from an ocean of power is just a dot. That dot and our whole existence is a dot. That's it. Just one dot. Now you expand the dot, the dot can expand infinite, right? When you draw away from it, it's a nuqt. But when you draw close to it, what happens? They have those, those things on the internet where you can move in and move out of something. So everything is just a dot. If you move towards the dot, the dot actually begins to go and expand. You see the dot still in the center but the circumference of the dot now is expanding. And as much as you go the circumference can infinitely expand and that's the reality of all creation. <coughs> all creation exists within just one dot. What we're existing in is Allah's expansion of that. As soon as it expands it has infinite points of the circumference but the center and God is one. So it's like one atom, one center of power, infinite points on the circumference. <coughs> That's why they see the universe and every picture of the universe is like that, like a circle with an eyeball or a dot in it. 
so that this creation can infinitely expand and infinite points on the circumference but the center of power is always one. And that comes to the oneness of why Allah is one, it's one, there's no other power. If there are multiple powers they would be destroying universes left and right. They get in within universes, creatures destroying one another but universes are not destroying because they take from one authority and that oneness is Ahad. Nothing is like unto it from Allah And anytime you have a circle and you study the circle in school, the circumference is infinite, right? But every point from the circumference to the center is equal. Every point from the circumference to the center is equal. Those are radius and those represent the Rasul, the messengers of the Divine. Messengers of the Divine are equal in their direction toward the center and that's Amman al Rasul that they're all brothers. They all represent the center and they go out to the circumference and tell them about God. Not another prophet came and went this direction and said, this is God, I'm God. But each prophet is just a radius on that circle that reaches to a circumference, tells the people on that circumference that come back to the center, come back to the power of oneness, don't look that way, look this way. And that nukht you can collapse the whole of creation and it's just a dot. Or you expand all of the creation becomes infinite, inshaAllah. <coughs> As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi <coughs> Walaykum As salaam wa Sayyidi, children's games and movies may contain negative elements, even witchcraft. Mm. Can you suggest how to navigate this? Don't use them. <laughs> If you believe there's elements of witchcraft in them, then yeah, no, you just, we have to sort of navigate through all these games. And we said before there's different Ouija boards and all these crazy stuff, they sell them in Walmart for some reason and then the, 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 the understanding is, is trying to open negative energies and negative forces and the overwhelming tide is everything negative now and we've described that in all the talks. That every, every singer now is a, is a high priest, he's not a singer being paid a hundred million dollars from God. He's being paid from shaitan and this is the equivalent of a high priest in a satanic understanding. So if you go back into the past and you wanted to see a satanic event, there would be an altar and at the altar somebody would be saying something, would be throwing fire and would be cursing and telling people to come to that evilness. And those were for what, 200 people, 300 people, how big were events in those times? Now they do it for 30 million people in one shot. So these are not low level, these are very high level, means we live at a time in which the immensity of negative forces are so overwhelmingly everywhere. And that's why then the meditation, the spiritual practice, how to develop myself, how to build myself and how to protect myself with these energies while well, these negativities are all around us. So that, that becomes the life's challenge. And those are, those are events that promote a very negative energy, negative understanding and that's what we, we understand from these uh, teachings of, of the days of difficulty. Those are meant to pull the light from people instead of give light to people. They're meant to bring the vibration down and as a result pull the energy and pull the light of people. Where spiritual and heavenly associations are meant to increase the light and increase the energy of people and to bring goodness and good character. So they become very clearly dele delineated now. Those associations that are trying to raise the vibration and the other associations that are trying to lower the vibration. The ones who lower the vibrations are paid a lot more. Hundred million bucks <laughs> and in one talk they reach 30 million people, their followers. 
50 million people. Can you imagine? They, they put out one bad comment to 50 million people that goes out. What kind of power shaitan gave to them? That's when you know the danger of, of what's happening. They say one thing and the hearts and minds of children change. And they like, what do you, where did you get that understanding? So, on this. So these are, these are high level things that are working for very high level negativity. And the overwhelming tide of, of negativity and you're just sort of chipping away with the little axe, our axe is like this big. <laughs> and that's, that's the life that is existing right now, is that we just keep picking away like an ant throwing water onto a fire. We do it for the grace of God and that Allah help us and protect us and protect our families, Ameen. that all these difficulties and all these negativities and how to, to stay positive, inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaykum Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah Sayyidi, I'm new to the tariqah and uh, I was wondering, I pray and read all the du'as, the surahs for protection morning and evening Mashallah. but still I feel some presence, why is that? Yeah, again anytime you do spiritual practices and energy practices, try to do the meditation, keep the connection with the shaykh, focus on, on making that connection with the shaykh so that, that the meditation is not by yourself and you feel the companionship of the shaykh's presence with you. That's why the guided meditation is so essential. When people say, why I have the guided meditation? Well because you don't want to open up your energy to just nothing, just calling out to nothing and just doing spiritual practices. You asking God that, I want my shaykh to be present with me and that his spiritual presence is present with me and that I'm connecting my heart with his presence and I'm asking him to accompany me on my meditation. Not that I'm worshipping him, worship is only for God but I'm asking to accompany him and that's why Allah says in Qur'an, قُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ قُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ Keep the company of truthful servants. And we've talked many times that when Allah talks, He doesn't care for the world. He's not talking for our temporary, temporal existence. He's talking about our world of light reality that is eternal. Is our eternal reality is that eternally keep the presence of those whom are truthful in their deeds and their actions and these servants. By keeping your presence with them, learning how to continuously keep our heart connected and that I'm present with them, I'm present with them, then I'm putting into my GPS very specific coordinates. As a result of being present with them, I begin to feel their energy and their presence with me. If you think their energy is with you and something bad is also, it's not, it can't. Because when truth and false they don't mix, the two of them don't hang out together. So then if I'm connecting, connecting correctly, I have my ta'weez, I'm doing my meditation, then the rest is maybe I'm becoming more sensitive to positive energies, I just don't know what they are. But don't focus on that, just keep focusing on the shaykh and say, of course there's going to be many energies in my home, especially when I'm becoming spiritual, that, that Allah sends many spiritual beings to accompany in your home. So that when you're doing your chanting and you're doing your practices, they're protecting your life and your existence because that's their realm and their world. So then if you become sensitive to that, don't be scared, don't get involved, don't focus on them. Do your practices, your worshipness and, and keep with your meditation and your tafakkur and contemplation inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what are we supposed to do to protect our family from negative and evil energies? The same thing that, that we're doing is that you, with the family you're, you're watching the zikr live so that that energy is coming into the home. Remember everything is an energy so when you turn on a television show there's an energy coming through that show and through that energy into the home. When you turn on music and sound what happens? There's a vibration coming through. If that vibration is negative it's coming through and that negative energy stays. But the same is for positive. So an association that's positive when you put it on your house, it's on the speakers of the house as if the energy like the horse is marching into your home. The energies of positive realities are marching into the home and begin to clear out all of the environment of the home. Because all of the budal, nujab, niqab, awtad, wal akhyar, all of these categories of, of 
piety that Allah has created from the angels, the jinn and all the saints, their energy accompanies these zikrs into the homes. When we play them, when we play Qur'an, when we play salawats, what's happening? These positive vibrations are coming into the house and the nature of positive vibration is what? It shatters negativity. Positive is not scared of bad, the bad is scared of positive. The positive doesn't come and say, oh, and then run back out. The positive comes with a light from heaven and they come in and all the negativity know that they're going to be destroyed because now the positive has shown up. And as a result, like the Raid commercial, when the spray, the spray bug thing, well, Raid is here. Because <laughs> the, the, you don't see bugs running towards the spray thinking they're going to fight the spray. The spray is coming then to destroy them. Same with the light. That's why Allah says, قُلْ يَا الْحَقْ When the haqq comes, when the truth comes, tell them. When truth comes, it will destroy the false and the falsehood by its nature is zahukan. It has nothing to stand on to fight the truth. So bring the truth into your life with praisings and good deeds, good actions, the Qur'an, salawats, anything of a good and beautific nature, it cleanses badness and it cleanses negative energy and then use isfan. So we have the burning of isfan which is wild ruh seed and the, the bukhurs, the ouds and all the fragrances but wild ruh seed, the isfan is very strong against burning negative energy. Not the sage and, and, and uh, Italian spices for food, the don't, don't, don't deal with those. What, what Prophet brought for us then is of a different reality. So isfan that burns away negativity and the negative creatures, their life is based on smell. So if you understand their existence, the jinn world they breathe their sustenance. So bad smells is like a food for them, they move towards it and they, they take it as a sustenance for themselves. So when we burn these other smells they don't like, like the oud smells when we burn the ouds and the bukhur and specifically isfan. When we burn that it burns them, they don't, they can't breathe it in, they gotta leave. They can't just, mmm that's not that bad. If they take it in it begin to burn their breathing system, their whatever Allah gave to them and they have to leave. So the cleansing is done by isfan inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, what to do if we ourselves are the hurdle in our own way? How to stay consistent when our nafs isn't letting us progress on the path? Thank you for everything. Alhamdulillah, Allah bless you, Alhamdulillah. We are our worst enemy, we don't need an outside enemy, we are the worst enemy ourselves. So that, that is the, the, the step in the path. Layla anta subhanika inni kuntum min ad-dhalimeen means that the, the Prophet Jonah the, the, the zikr of Sayyidina Yunus was that, Layla anta subhanika inni kuntum min al-dhalimeen. How do you translate that? That, uh, glory, glory be to God that I'm verily an oppressor to myself. One is the glorifying my Lord and that I'm an oppressor. So I know that I'm my worst enemy. Had I not been my worst enemy, I would have been walking on water. Because what of power God has given to us is unimaginable. Satan knows that and that's why he makes us to use our power for bad. But we don't know it and so the whole battle inside is I don't have an outside enemy, my, my biggest enemy is inside me and it's the one making everything to fail, everything to, to be wrong, everything to stop and that's why then the fight and the, and the great jihad is inside. Prophet described that the greatest battle is inside. So the wielding of a weapon on people is not, not allowed but to bring the fight inside is the most important. In which I look to myself and I say, I'm going to fight my desires and my bad character and my anger and, and all these issues. So no, that's a given. If we're enrolled in tariqah then that's the first step is to know that, that uh, the, this enemy in, inside of me is the one ruining everything and that I'm going to take every step to fight that, that becomes then your spiritual path. 
your ta'wiz, your connection, your meditation. Why do we keep saying meditation but it's the hardest thing in the world to do if you're doing it correctly? Because the enemy inside is like, I don't want that energy coming. I'll be your guide, don't worry, you don't need him, you don't need them, I'll, I'll guide you, we'll do good, don't worry, two of us together we work against everyone. <laughs> it's like a love story. Me and you, we go, let's go, don't worry about it. So what are you talking about? You're taking me over the cliff ten times. So no, don't worry. And people, they're worst enemies. If they follow themselves, that's why I say in the English, the words have been fooling people. Self-realization. If you take self out and put it ego, you would never do that. Ego realization. Do you think that I could sit with my ego and he's going to tell me the truth about myself? No. He's going to say, you're great, you're beautiful, you're the most amazing guy I've ever met. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no self-realization. So these words have just been fooling people. Yeah, the, the, it's the self that's causing all the problems, I've got to get rid of that guy. So then the, the process of looking in, into my nafs and what is my nafs is saying and trying to do the difference of it, why can't I follow the, the guidance and that teaching, I'm going to do it and come against what you're saying, no, 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 don't do it, you follow me, he said, I'm not going to follow you. And that becomes the whole internal struggle. Then when I meditate and contemplate the energy that coming from meditation is burning that ego. And that's why it's so important. And when you meditate with the guide, the reflection from the guide is, I'm asking that please for the guide to be there, my guide to be there, so that he can also make sure my ego is not playing with me in the meditation, right? If you meditate by yourself, what happens? Maybe your ego just walked in front of you, sat in front of you, you're the best one, you're super amazing, I'm going to dress you with a big jubba. If your ego comes in front of you in your meditation, and these are all the people who meditate without a guide, that's why they make these weird horrific statues in the end, why? Because that ego is, is them. So the ego's in front of them saying, you're the best one. Oh, let me think what I did wrong, you did nothing wrong today, everything was fantastic. No, that you can't do that, you can't meditate by yourself, it's yourself that you're scared of. It's the one who's making all the problems. So when I'm asking God, please let my shaykh to be with me. I'm asking for him to be with me, his nazar to be upon me and that I want to realize myself. Who knows himself will know his Lord. Well then as soon as you begin to make the madad and the shaykh is there, you feel the presence of the shaykh, you know in your heart and in your faith the shaykh is there, then what did I do wrong? As soon as you say nothing, the shaykh will inspire within your heart, oh, what are you talking about? You did this, you did this, you did this, you did this. And then they say, oh, I don't want to do this meditation, I don't like the meditation. And that's what was real, is that the shaykh's energy is there and they begin to inspire your heart, be truthful. What you did was not correct. What actions you took were not correct. How you're conducting yourself is not correct. Because they are a mirror of truth. Because they have no, they have no, what's the word? They have no benefit to, to, to cheat you in your meditation, but your ego does has a benefit to cheat you, to lie to you, to make you think everything is okay. But you're bringing a, a, a non-partial judge into your meditation. So the minute you meditate, the presence is there that, what did I do wrong? Take my accounting for the day. That inspire me, what did I do wrong, my Lord? And my shaykh is with me. And then the truth of inspiration comes, you did the following things wrong, correct these actions and then you're taking a daily inventory of yourself, a daily accounting of oneself with called muhassaba. So muraqaba is to be vigilant over the self, muhassaba is to take an accounting of myself. But it can only happen if my guide is there because he comes with the light of truth and says, eh, reconsider what you were doing. And then we begin to perfect ourselves. I say, oh, I'm sorry, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Ya Rabbi, make my day, my Lord, let my day tomorrow to be better. Amen. And then every day we try to improve ourselves, improve ourselves with that mirror of truth always there. And that's what's important. That's what's, that what makes the, the meditations to become successful and very powerful. Because then the shaykh's role becomes one to be a truth 
But then also the reflective nature we talked about, they are like satellite dishes. When the student's ready, the shaykh's light and, and soul is like a mirror and begin to reflect from his shaykh, from his shaykh, from his shaykh, from his shaykh, all the way from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad these lights that begin to dress the soul of that student to the level in which the student is ready. So every time you take a step with good character and perfect yourself, you're ready for more light. Can you imagine if they turn the light on all the way? Where was the example of that when Sayyidina Musa asked, Moses asked, let me see you. And Allah says, you can't see me but I'll show you my glory, he was dead. But that because he's a prophet of God, Allah wanted him to reach that station of death as a result of his becoming completely obliterated and then came back to life with a different reality and at that time said, ana awwal al-Muslimin and he accepted the reality of Islam and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and that, that has an immense reality. So it means that not everybody can take that light at one shot. So what Allah gives to them is then find these guides. When you meditate and contemplate, they're merely a reflection like a satellite. They keep reflecting a light to the extent that you can take. For if Allah was to send the shot one shot, the person would be dead because they're, they're not built their capacity yet like an electrical house. You can't even take a, a 110 or, or 120 line and you now want a direct connection from the power station to come to you, it doesn't happen like that. Allah says, don't ask for that which would harm you. So everything has Allah has a means, a means in which to reach the servant, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, there are certain friends whom when I meet them, they tell me about their life problems to ask for advice. It makes me extremely tired. Could you please advise? Yeah, try not to give people advice. So in this path of spirituality, your soul, when you begin to make spiritual practices, your soul becomes very light. And as a result of interacting with people, you're going to be taking on burdens, known and unknown because this is just basic energy teaching. You build a positive light, you go to the mall, everyone's negative. What happens when you put a posit positive charge out? In school they told you how to put a wire on a battery and then you put the line out, what happens? It collects all of the negative charge, it collects all the paper clips. So anytime in life you put a positive charge, all negativity is going to come. So the, the ones that we have on a daily basis with wudu and our washing and our keeping clean, most of that can be reflected. When you come home you wash it off, you meditate, take the negativity away. The ones that are most difficult to take off are the ones in which you talk to people and give advice. So somebody very depressed and very in a dark place sit and begin to talk to you for hours, oh the world is horrible, life is horrible, the world is, is, is nothing, uh, my life is nothing. My, all, all of this negativity visualize like a big dark trench coat that now been put onto you. And all of a sudden you go away like a day later feeling the world is over, the world is nothing, I have nothing in my life, I don't know what… and you don't know where this feeling came from. What came from that discussion you had? That when you went deep into talking and trying to guide, there's a consequence. It means this energy… En energy is going to be exchanged. If you're giving out positive energy, where's the negative going? It's coming to you. That person probably went think, ah, this is the best feeling I've ever had in years because they, they dumped <laughs> all their garbage and they left feeling good. Well, that's okay for a shaykh because that's his training. So the shaykhs they collect garbage, right? Because Allah turned them into incinerators. They take the garbage of people, if you study what a sun is, the sun in our galaxy actually begins to consume everything in the galaxy. Its gravitational pull begins to pull elements towards itself and use it as a fuel. 
and it's using it as a fuel and emitting a light. Well, Allah made the heart of these awliya like that that they can take the sins of people and the bad energy of people, they bring it, they consume it. As a result of consuming it, they put out much more light. But if you're not been developed like that, you're just being thrown burdens and thrown burdens until it destroys you. So that's the difference. That's why we say this way of sainthood is that Allah has to turn them into a son. And that's why Prophet described that, follow my companions, any of them, they are like a najm on a dark night, they are like stars on a dark night. Stars means that they are all sons, I turn them into sons, they'll eat and destroy all your sins and purify you. So that's the, the reality of a najm and this is the Sufi path, is the path of that reality, how to reach towards being a son. We have a temporary light but it didn't reach eternal yet. Once you become lit with your spiritual practices, you become heated as if your, your torch is on, it never goes off. But now it's a temporary light, feel good, feel bad, feel good, feel bad. But when the spiritual practice becomes strong enough and the purity is strong enough, then Allah ignite them. When they're ignited, then they're continuously lit, they heat up, there's all sorts of signs within them. Now they consume burdens and that, that becomes a reality that is opening for them, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Can we use eggs to clean energy from the body? From where? Eggs. Sure. We, we use nazr, when we, when we make a sacrifice and you make a sacrifice to an animal that you're, 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 you're using is, has a tremendous blessing. So when there's a difficulty you make a nazr and say that sacrifice a lamb on my behalf, what happens is there's an energy exchange that you're asking God that these negative burdens that are burdening me and my life, put that upon that creature and that that creature will carry that burden and that's a gift for that creature because its service was to God and so its ultimate service is to serve this creation. So when this creation is asking, take my burden so I'll be lightened, that creature is willingly taking that as a gift from God that they're now their energy is going to be elevated in a different reality. But as a result of that sacrifice and then the meat distributed to the poor, then all these blessings and all these dressings come to people. But the, the condition of that qurban and that nazr was that it took away difficulties from people. So they can do that with a chicken, they can do that with a lamb and if they don't have any of that and they're at home they can do that with an egg. And they put the egg over the head of the child or something that's not right, reciting ayatul kursi and asking Allah to put the difficulty into that egg and then phew, throw it outside and the animals outside will eat that egg and that difficulty was taken away with that. So when they don't have a naz, they don't have a lamb to give right away but they feel something's not right and the child is not acting right, then they just put the egg over their head reciting ayatul kursi that Allah take that difficulty upon this creation and that they sacrifice it in the backyard and the animals go and eat the egg enjoying it, inshaAllah. There's always an exchange of energy, so understanding how to, to use this exchange of energy for negative to go and that, that be taken away inshaAllah. And that's why the, the qurban has a tremendous reality. Anytime you don't have, uh, you have a difficulty, you go and do the qurban and that, that difficulty to be taken by that animal. And then that meat distributed, so it's all of benefit. That meat reaches the people who don't even have meat to eat or food to eat. So then that has immense blessings for people whom want to have the benefit of that meat. And those whom have, then it's a great opportunity for them to take away burdens and feed people. So it's, it's good for all, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh, Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Sayyidi, what do we do if everyone stays away from us because we are in tariqah? Also, if we get badly criticized of our path we took, <laughs> hmm. are these people bad for us? 
forgive me. When, when Sayyidina Isa went into the town from Surat al Yasin and started to tell them about the good news and the good word of God, the people picked up rocks and threw it at him. I said, why are you throwing rocks at me? Is it that I remind you of, of goodness? And he said, yes, exactly, and if you don't stop we'll kill you. Means that any time in life you remind people of, of good and what they should be doing of good, of course they're not going to be happy. You know, everybody's content in, 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 the, in the, the things they do and everybody knows in their inner heart what's right and what's, what's correct. So when they see the tariqah people that, oh, you're sitting and doing zikr and oh, you're trying to improve yourself, what's, what could possibly be wrong with tariqah? That you're sitting to do zikr, you're sitting to contemplate, you're sitting to, to meditate, you're trying to, to do good deeds and go out and feed people, they know in their heart and soul they should be doing that. And so from that verse is a teaching, anytime we do good then the ones who are not doing good, what do they want to do? They want to kill you. They want to throw a rock at you, they want you to stop. Why? Because stop reminding me of what I should be doing. I'm very content and just, you know, doing bad. So this becomes a given in life, you just have to be patient with it and try to be, you know, tell people to be patient with it, keep a little bit of distance when people are becoming agitated and aggravated and then learn how to teach that don't be, you know, threatened by me, don't, don't worry you all have to be like me and uh, you know, you try to, to work with it as much as possible. But the natural process is that you begin to levitate more towards the group in which you resemble and which the fellowship of good. If I keep myself and I want to be good and I hang out with a motorcycle gang, the likely is that the gang will change me back to being a motorcycle gang. Because they say, look, you can't hang out with you, you, make, you ruin the party, you, you're a Debbie Downer, every time we look at you, you remind us of the heavens, we don't want that. So the, the people whom I go with will make me to be with them and to be like them. And that's why they have an expression that, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. So that's going to have a natural process anyways. You begin to levitate more towards people of like mind, people who want to improve themselves, people who, who want to achieve what you want to achieve. Forget about religion, if it was someone like you want to achieve and study and you want to be a doctor but all your friends hate school. Do you think the likelihood of you becoming a doctor like that? No, because they'll tell you don't study, come on and party with us, come on and go out, let's go out, let's go out. So at some point in your life you shave your head, sit in a corner and study and, and you leave those friends. So if you want to achieve something you have to move towards the people who want to achieve that too. And then your friends become, you become more selective of, of who you want to be with in life, inshaAllah. Uh, As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what is the mysticism behind the Arabic calligraphy? Mysticism behind the whole <laughs> Arabic calligraphy? That's ilmu huruf, that's what we call the, 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 the science of, of letters and numbers. You can go to nurmuhammad.com and begin to study the ilmu huruf. And uh, the secret of everything Allah put within the kalam, within the letters. And when Allah wants the servant to be given knowledge, He opens within their heart the understanding of letters. And we gave the English version of that in the talk on spelling, which Mahdi should be posting in the next few days, right? So there is an immense secret, this nation is a newer nation. These things that were brought out, were brought out from very nefarious sources. So spelling is a spell, that's why it's called spelling. So it means the, the concept of teaching people letters and words was to teach them how to conduct and move energy so that you could cast a spell. Grammar, we said before, it's not grammar, it's origin in the, the etymology of words. You take the words and you put it into this app of etymology of words. Grammar was the casting and the conjuring of demons. Through what? Spelling, <laughs> spells. So the use of words was for energy movement. 
Allah's words no doubt is the movement of heaven, the energies and to move people's hearts and souls. The dunya they're using it for something different and that's why their, their words are different, hello. Well immediately you just casted hell onto somebody, there can't be no good after that, right? So then you see the greatness Prophet said, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah. How beautiful is that? It means the peace and blessings be upon you, God's Rahmah be upon you. As soon as you meet somebody, peace and blessings be upon you. I don't know if I like you and you may not like me but at least peace and blessings be upon you. Let's not start with any problems. But how could you have any hope when you tell somebody hell? Then you see how an energy was cast and then the comments come back. And that's all the shaitan wanted is this movement of energy that people are completely sort of don't understand what was being said. Good morning, well that came from morning. Why, why, why wake up as if you're in mourning like a death occurred? Means then these were all these spells that would change your energy throughout the day. And we went through that whole talk on all, look at all these words, you hire a liar, right? To go through a contract. So etymology of contract was a con, a, a, a deception. And a track was an ability to, to conceive this deception. So actual contract is what? Is a bunch of papers on how to fool you to get what I want that you don't know. Until the day we go to court and you say, I thought I was going to get ten dollars, <laughs> look no you actually owe me fifteen. It was a deception that you would hide within paperwork, the lying people would draft for you. which was not Islam. Islam you had to put your points exactly what you want, the points the other person wants and that was it. There was no contracting, there was no, none of these terminologies. Yeah, it was exactly just you're going to pay this, you're going to pay that, that's it. Write it, sign it, witness it. So it means all of these, these etymology of these words that are coming out, they're all casting of energies. When somebody is singing cursed words, He's admitting it's cursed. So when I say it, there's a cursing coming upon you. When you're singing it nicely in your car, there's a cursing coming <laughs> on you too because they're cursed words. And we described in other talks that shaitan is scared of Allah. So he knows whatever he does has to be a disclaimer, right? Satan is scared of God. He's, he's not in any way going to have a problem with God, he's going to put a disclaimer. Right? So when he comes up and said, I told them if they drank this, there were spirits in it. How could they tell you that they don't know why they drank that? It's called spirits. One of them's called jinn. So you can't deny what was in there. Now they, they smoke and they say, I didn't know. They're going to go to Allah and say, I didn't know I was going to die and everyone I puffed, everyone else died down the street too. And they said, but didn't you have this on the package, this, this warning that everyone going to die? But those are from shaitan, that he doesn't want any problem with Allah. So everything he has to disclose. But are you reading the disclosure? Are you understanding he's disclosing it? So he's not doing anything that he doesn't disclose. So he said, they sang cursed words and made all these problems. So, but Ya Rabbi, I told them, it's cursed. They wanted to use cursed words. And then they understand. So you see it, it's all, it's all in our faces. But Allah asked, you have eyes to see and ears to hear, inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun wa salaamu wa salaam wa alhamdulillahi rabbina wa alameen illa shaykhan abhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa alayhi wa sahabi kiram. Qalam shaykhina fi tariqatan ashbandiyyatul aliyya wa sayri sadatina wa siddiqin al-fatiha. As-salaam.